Oh my goodness, can you believe we're doing a video uh, not on series anymore? We're starting a new fresh topic that's not even remotely related to the series topics. Uh, we're going to start our polar coordinates. And the good news is we're going to kind of leapfrog back into pre-calc and uh, we're going to build from the ground up. And uh, we're not going to really uh, assume that you uh, recall a whole lot about polar coordinates from last year. So hopefully that will comfort you as we get going. But uh, I want to start right in. And my first picture here on the left has all the uh, degrees nicely labeled in um, well, degrees, I guess. Um, whereas the one on the right is in radians, and that's the one we'll be predominantly working with. But I thought we'd warm up with the one in degrees because that's usually a little easier to wrap our brains around. But our coordinates, instead of being x comma y, are generally going to be r comma theta. So if I gave you a specific example, like three comma, uh, let's say, 120 degrees. What that really means is we're going to start at the what's called the pole. It used to be called the origin. Now I call it the pole. I'm going to walk three units on what used to be called the x-axis. So I'm going to land right about there for now. And then after I walk three units to the right, I'm then going to rotate counterclockwise 120 degrees on that arc. And it's going to land me right there. So that right there is what I'll call point P or my final resting point for 3 comma 120. Very important here, and we'll talk a lot about this, as long as that angle is positive, we're going to always go counterclockwise. But if the angle is negative, we'd go clockwise. So why don't I do one like that? What if I gave you the, the ordered pair 4 comma negative 30 degrees? What you would then do is walk four units to the right on what used to be called the x-axis and then rotate clockwise 30 degrees and therefore land right here at negative 30. Now, um, we'll start talking uh, from this point forward. Let's make uh, an agreement that we're going to speak in radians only. And uh, we'll tackle this rascal right here. Um, let's see. What if I had the point 2 comma pi over 6? And you could certainly remind yourself that pi over 6 is equivalent to 30 degrees. And uh, I'm usually, let's see, I usually don't do increments of 12. So I'm going to pretend that one's not there. Maybe the 5 pi over 12 is not there. But all the other, like everything else there in the first quadrant, uh, the pi over 6, the pi over 4, and the pi over 3 are certainly ones we have to be comfortable with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right on the pole. I'm going to walk, let's see, I'll get my laser pointer here. I'm going to walk two units to the right, and then I'm going to rotate up pi over 6 degrees counterclockwise and we'll put a nice dot right there okay and what we're going to get into here shortly is the the fact that there's multiple representations of that distinct ordered pair that distinct point um, and we'll we'll get into what we call the big four polar rules and and we're going to see lots of good stuff tonight on this particular slide, I just kind of wanted to set the stage and give you an idea of where we're going over the next two weeks. In our first picture here in the upper left-hand corner, we're going to do a lot of tangent lines that are tangent to a polar curve. And uh, for instance, I drew one right here that was tangent um, uh, one theta e. Let's see. I don't even remember what my theta was, but you could notice that that line's definitely tangent to my curve right there. If I had to estimate, what do you think that theta would be? Yeah, looks like it might have been pi over six or about 30 degrees. Uh, we decided to do a tangent line at. But uh, one of the other fun questions they'll get into is they'll ask you, where does this curve um, have horizontal tangent lines, or where does that vertical tangent line? So maybe we'll play. Let's try the horizontal ones first. First, of all, how many horizontal tangent lines do you see on this limicon? Um, I see one right here at the top. I see one at the top of the inner loop, and then I see two more distinct ones, one right here and one right here. These are not the same horizontal line. Okay, It's very important that these two at the bottom are considered unique and distinct because the angles that correspond to those two points are unique and distinct. Um, a few other things that we're going to get into. Let's call this down here our second picture. They might. Uh, we're going to do a lot of area. This one's describing the area of just the inner loop only. Let's call this over here our third picture. We might do the area that's um, inside of two curves, maybe the yellow area here, um, where we've got to find the intersection between two points and then calculate the area. Or they may just ask us for the area that's uh, maybe inside the limicon, which would be the pink curve, uh, yet yeah, outside of the circle, which is the blue curve, and, and then we'd have to you know, find the area that's just in between them, which is kind of exciting. Um, let's see, let's call this our fourth picture right here. Uh, again, there's just another area problem where they're asking for the area that's maybe inside the red circle and yet outside of that blue limicon with the dimple in it. And last but not least, and this is beyond the scope of our class, 
um, but I just like to show you a cool 3D picture here. And when you do get into three dimensional um, images and so forth, there's a lot of times where using polar coordinates is advantageous and certainly easier to represent these pictures as opposed to using the old fashioned rectangular or sometimes we call them Cartesian coordinates. Um, here I just want to practice graphing a few where maybe the R value is negative or maybe the theta value is negative again. Now when I have an R value that's negative, what I do instead of walking in the positive X axis direction, I'm going to walk to the left three units. Okay, so that looks like that put me right about here. Then from starting at that point, I'm going to now rotate pi over three radians or 60 degrees. And that's going to put me right here at four pi over three right there. So now I've got to go ahead and... We'll put a point right there. Um, now there is an alternative way. Instead of doing the R value first and then the, the theta value second, sometimes, and this is maybe the method I probably do more often, is what I do first is I kind of I kind of imagine that I'm at three, I rotate to pi over three, and then I just go backwards on that same axis. Uh, if you stay right on this line and travel three units in the opposite direction, you'll also land right there. So you can do the theta first and then the R second. Um, just like you know, you used to, you could certainly graph Y values before X values if you wanted to on the Cartesian system. Um, the second point that I want to do, we'll try to switch colors here. Uh, let's try, um, let's see, what could we do? Let's try negative 4 comma negative 2 pi over 3. This is a little trickier one. So what we've, we've got both values that are negative. A couple ways we could approach this. Let's, first thing I could do is I could do um, the negative 4, so that means I'm going to go 4 units this way, and then I'm going to rotate clockwise 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 radians. So let's see, right there that would be 90 and I need to go another 60 so I think that would put me right here. Um, so let's go grab, let's see, right there maybe. Uh, the opposite way of doing that is we could rotate, um, we could pretend we're at positive 4 for a moment, we could rotate clockwise 2 pi over 3 which would, let's see, that would put me, let's see, right here at 7 pi over 6 I believe. And then from there, shoot negative four units and just in the opposite direction, and that would put you right back here in the same location. Uh, multiple represent, representations of a single point, I think, is really a profound moment in your polar career when you feel comfortable not only plotting this point, but then also naming three other ordered pairs that uh, represent the same point. And I think once you cross that bridge and you feel confident and comfortable doing so, then you're really, really ready to graduate and tackle the calculus elements of polar coordinates. But and I don't think we can progress and go forward until we've mastered this single act right here. So first things first, let's plot the point two comma negative four. We'll walk two units to the right, then rotate pi over four units and land right there. Now, the challenge to you is I want you to come up with three other ordered pairs that um, represent that same exact point. So, for instance, the first thing I could do is I could, um, let's say I, I rotated 5 pi over 4, but instead of having an R value of positive 2, I made my R value negative 2. So that's my first one. I'm going to say negative 2 comma 5 pi over 4. Just make sure your R value comes first and your theta comes second. So there's one option. The other option is to keep a positive R value but negate your angle. So let's see, instead of rotating counterclockwise with a positive angle, we could then rotate clockwise with a negative angle. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping my R value positive, but then I'm rotating negative 7 pi over 4, which is negative 315 degrees. And all that does is it takes you from here all the way back around to there. That would be negative 7 pi over 4. Now the third one that I want to challenge you with is really kind of crazy. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my R value positive. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate in the positive direction in the counterclockwise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do one full rotation, which would be 2 pi, plus an additional pi over 4. Did you catch that? I did one full rotation, which is 2 pi, plus an additional pi over 4. And what that's going to end up, if I get common denominators and all that jazz, I'm going to end up with 9 pi over 4.
Okay. Now what you'll start to notice is there is an infinite number of representations. All I'm doing is I'm just asking for three of them because what you can do is you could start doing you know two full revolutions plus pi over four or three full revolutions plus pi over four, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course then you could do it in the opposite direction and go clockwise and create negative angles and so forth. Um, but we're going to do two more examples similar to this one where we challenge you to come up with three other representations. Our second point is 3 comma 7 pi over 6. So I'm going to walk three units to the right, uh, which would put me right about here. Then I'm going to rotate 7 pi over 6, which is going to land right there. So grab my pen and looks like, okay, so there's my original point. Now the challenge becomes, can I create three other ordered pairs to represent that same exact point on the polar graph? My first one is I'm going to create a negative R value and then try to ask myself, what do I think the angle should be? In this case, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rotate, um, let's see, pi over 6, and then from there just walk straight backwards three units. So pi over 6 would simply be my theta, my angle. Uh, the second representation, I'm going to use a negative angle. And let's see, what would I have to do to create that? Um, let's see, I'm going to start right here at positive 3. So instead of rotating counterclockwise, I'm going to rotate clockwise. And what angle is that right in here? I think that's negative 5 pi over 6. Let's see if I can squeeze it in there. And of course, in that situation, my R stayed a positive 3. If I negated both of them, it would have sent me back there. And I didn't want to be back there in the old first quadrant. Now, the third representation is my favorite one. I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start at 3, I'm going to do one full revolution, which would be 2 pi, and then an additional 7 pi over 6. So off to the side here, I'm thinking one full revolution plus an additional 7 pi over 6. By the time I get common denominators, I'm going to end up with 19 pi over 6. And again, we could continue to play that game and create an infinite number of representations. All right, hopefully we're picking up confidence. And, and certainly feel free, I want to challenge you to create this uh, three other representations by yourself on this ordered pair. Uh, but if you're feeling shaky, then just hang with me and you can hear me kind of walk myself through this one. So, But I'm going to go four units to the right, and then I'm going to rotate five pi over three radians, which is going to put me right about, let's see, where's five pi? Oh, right there. I'm right on it. Five pi over three right there. Um, so we're cooking right there in what we used to call the fourth quadrant. And um, let's see, the first one, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to negate the R value and just try to create the opposite angle. Let's see, the angle would have to be about 2 pi over 3. So if I went 2 pi over 3 and then shot 4 units backwards, it would put me right where I need to be. So I'm going to say 2 pi over 3 is my angle. Uh, the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a positive R but a negative angle. So I'm thinking if I started here, I would rotate negative pi over 3 degrees or negative 60 degrees if you want to think that way. Uh, negative pi over 3. And then last but not least, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to do one, whoops, get a little crazy, uh, one full revolution plus an additional 5 pi over 3 radians. So let's see, uh, scrap paper here. I'm thinking one full revolution plus an additional 5 pi over 3. So, uh, let's see, common denominators, all that 9 yards, 11 pi over 3, I believe, is going to be my, my angle if I, if I did that. Let's see, yeah, 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 I think I did that right. So holler at me if I screwed that up and, and, and got the wrong uh, numerator. But So hopefully you're feeling better, and let's go tackle some more. All right, there's really four big polar rules you went over in Calc last year that we need to know by heart, and it all starts with this idea. Um, if we focus on the first quadrant, to keep it simple, and you wanted to plot point P up there in, in, in the Cartesian system, we'd just call it X comma Y. Or, remember, Cartesian is just another word for rectangular. We would have gone, let's see, switch colors here. We would have gone X units to the right. We would have then gone up y units straight up and we would have landed at our point. Now when we start doing polars what we did is we went out our units which would maybe put me right there and then I rotated counterclockwise theta degrees which landed me at the same point. So we're going to say that the red line has a length of r and the angle right there is theta. Now with that simple image in your mind you could build the four big rules. The first one is just the Pythagorean theorem, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, or in other words, r equals radical x squared plus y squared. Um, let's see, what would be another good one? Uh, the other good one is the tangent of theta 
is equal to opposite over adjacent, or the length of y divided by the length of x. That's another very nice one. Uh, the third one is starts with the idea that the uh, sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And by the time we multiply the r over, we could say that y is really r times the sine of theta. And then the fourth one starts with the idea that the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And multiply the r over, we have x is equivalent to r cosine of theta. And I want to just help you memorize those two. I think they go in alphabetical order. For instance, x comes before y and C comes before S, so X is paired with cosine and Y is paired with sine, and, and hopefully we need, to, we need to memorize these big four polar rules and those will be on lots of our bite-sized quizzes, etc., etc. Okay, we're gonna practice converting from a rectangular or a Cartesian coordinate into a polar coordinate. The first one I'm gonna throw at you is the point three comma four, and I think it's important to instantly visualize where that point would be. Three units to the right, four units up, we'll put it right there maybe. And uh, so we're definitely in the first quadrant, so we just have to make sure that when you're all done, you give me an angle that's somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. And that's usually the only thing that we screw up is we just get the wrong angle because of the quadrant we're in. Um, but the first thing is I'm going to say that r is equal to radical x squared plus y squared, so I have an r value of 5. And then I could say that the tangent of theta is y divided by x, therefore theta is really the inverse tan of 4 thirds. And that's a pretty feisty one, so I throw that in my calculator. I ended up getting um, to three decimals. I got 0.927 radians for my theta. And by default, we're just automatically always talking in radians. You don't have to wait for the directions to say radians. So my answer there would be 5, 0.927 for my equivalent polar form. We'll try another one kind of similar to that. All right, number two, what if they gave me the rectangular coordinates of negative one comma one? All right, first things first, r is equal to the x squared plus the y squared, so r is simply radical two units. Now here comes the fun one. The tangent of theta is equal to one divided by negative one. And the inverse tangent of negative one brings up a minor discussion, okay? Typically, we used to think the answer could be in the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant, and that both answers were equally good. However, one is good today, one's bad. You have to, again, visualize where that ordered pair lives according to the rectangular system. If you went left one, up one, you'd be sitting right here. So that means when you do inverse tan of negative one, you have to choose the second quadrant as opposed to the fourth quadrant. You have to say that theta is equal to three pi over four. Okay, um, and so my final answer is going to be radical 2 comma 3 pi over 4. If you tried to say 7 pi over 4, we would definitely have to mark that wrong. Here we're going to turn the tables around and we're going to start with polar and convert it into rectangular. Do just the opposite. So perhaps I give you the polar point with an r value of 7 and a theta of pi over 3. The first thing I would do is I'd say my x coordinates really r times the cosine of theta. And in this case, let's see, cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so I got 7 halves for my x value. Similarly, y is equal to 7 times the sine of pi over 3. And that means y is really 7 radical 3 over 2. So at the end of the day, we could say the Cartesian point, or the rectangular point, is 7 halves comma 7 radical 3 over 2. We'll do one more similar to that. Hopefully, this is all coming back to you, and you've have these great memories of pre-calc polar coordinates coming back. Um, what if we gave you the point 5 comma pi? And certainly we could visualize that. It would be somewhere over here on the polar system. Um, let's see. X value is going to be 5 times the cosine of pi, which is going to give us negative 5. And then the Y value is going to be 5 times the sine of pi which is going to give us zero. So that ordered pair is negative five comma zero in rectangular coordinates. We're going to up the ante just a whisker. We're going to start starting, we're going to work with equations instead of just points. Again, the word Cartesian is just a substitute word for rectangular. So let's start with a rectangular equation, x squared plus y squared equals 16. And certainly we can appreciate that equation as a circle that's centered at the origin with a radius of four. Now all we're going to recall is 
Again, go back, you have to visualize your big four polar rules. And we know that R squared is really X squared plus Y squared. So this whole quantity right here can be rewritten as R squared, which means R equals four. And we are done, ladies and gentlemen. That is the equivalent equation in polars. And you can see how much simpler that is when you compare it to its uh, rectangular counterpart. And there are so many instances where the polar representation is simpler than the rectangular. Let's do one more example. Uh, what if we said that R equals... Whoops, scratch that. I don't want to start with R. I want to start with... Um, let's scribble that out. Let's say just X equals 1. Just a very basic vertical line. We could always... When you see that X, you could substitute R cosine of theta into his place. And then if you want to solve for r, you could say 1 over cosine, or you could just say r equals secant of theta. We're going to turn the tables just a little bit. We're going to start with a polar equation and try to convert it into a rectangular equation. Um, let's start with just a very simple polar equation, r equals 5. And what we're going to do is uh, for that r value, I'm going to substitute radical x squared plus y squared from my big four list. And then we could simply say x squared plus y squared equals 25. And again, we're just dealing with a very simple circle that's centered at the origin. So we're just keeping it very simple today. Um, the other one that you might run into once in a while, let's say, let's say maybe r is equal to three sine of theta. This is a very popular equation. What we could do is r equals, so my first move is to simply say that sine of theta is equivalent to the y coordinate divided by r, okay? That's just taking one of my big fours and slightly tweaking it. Um, I divided the r over to isolate the sine. Now, I could, let's see, so this, just to rewrite it, it's really 3y divided by r. So I can cross multiply and say something like this. And then I could say r squared is really x squared plus y squared. And a lot of times what you'll do is you'll see them set these equations equal to zero is a common habit as well. So there you go. That's everything that we should know from pre-calc minus the graphing. And that's what we'll spend the next day and a half working on is getting that graphing under our belts. Today, though, I do want to go over some very basic, simple graphs uh, and get some of the easier ones out of the way. A very nice graph to start with here is simply the graph r equals 3. Um, you'll notice there is no theta in this equation, so this equation is independent and uh, in the sense that uh, the value of theta does not affect the r value. But anyway, I always like, when all else fails, whether I'm in rectangular coordinates or polar coordinates or parametrics or spherical coordinates, whatever the case might be, when all else fails, make a table of values, okay? And what we're saying here is r has to be a 3 at all times, no matter what. And theta can be anything it wants to be. Theta could be 0. Theta could be pi over 6. Theta could be pi over 2. Theta could be 5 pi over 6. Uh, theta could be 3 pi over 2. It just doesn't matter. So now we're going to just transfer all those points over and see what we get. As I start to plot those five points I have listed here, let's see, there's, uh, whoops, got to grab my pen. Okay. Right there's one, let's see, pi over six is right there, pi over two. And I totally chose those thetas at random. I was just trying to demonstrate that it could be any value of theta your heart desires. Three pi over two is down here. And you'll notice all we're doing is we're traveling very nicely around that arc right there. And we're creating a beautiful circle that's centered at the origin with a radius of three. So circles like this are very popular and I want you to be able to graph and visualize them uh, within the snap of your fingers. One of my very personal favorites, and this is the last one we'll, we'll finish with tonight, is called Archimedes' Spiral. And basically what it says is that uh, R is equivalent to the value of theta, okay? So as you try to just create a generic table of values, you're saying, okay, well, if theta has a length of zero, or I'm sorry, if R has a length of zero, then theta has a length of zero. Um, if R is two, theta is two. But that one's kind of a funny one to graph because you're like, what is two radians, you know? Um, so I'm going to keep things in term of, terms of pi so that I can graph them a little bit more nicely. I'm going to say if R is pi over six, uh, which is you know, roughly one half, then the theta is going to be pi over six. If R is pi over two, then theta is going to be pi over two. Remember, pi over two is about one and a half, you know, three over two. 
Um, let's see, if r was pi, theta is going to be pi, et cetera, et cetera. You can see the pattern developing. So what we're going to do as far as graphing this, and we're going to have to estimate a little bit. I start with 0, 0. Then I'm going to do pi over 6, which is about a half, and then rotate up pi over 6, which is going to put me right about there. Um, then I'm going to do pi over 2, which is like 1 and a half, and then rotate up pi over 2 degrees, put me roughly right there. And then pi is about 3, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, you know, so put me about right there. And what you can see is that they're both increasing, proportionally speaking, and we start to create something that is gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger and kind of goes off the chart like that. Now my picture doesn't do it justice, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a picture that I found on the website here. Let's see if I can. Okay, yeah, this looks like it. All right, so you can notice that it just gradually spirals um, in a very uh, predictable fashion, and the R is going to grow without bound and just continue to cycle around and around and just gradually get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's kind of a fun one to play with. We're going to get into a lot of our uh, limicons with inner loops, limicons with dimples, and our roses and all those crazy things tomorrow. So hopefully we got off to a good start with uh, our pullers, and we'll catch you tomorrow.